there's one. Good one, yeah. Oh yeah, real good one. Ooh. Oh God, it's a tank, dude. It's a tank. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, baby. Jeez. The hook popped. The hook popped out right there. Yeah. All right, guys. That's get a look. cute, man. Yeah. Hey, Alex, welcome back to another episode of Addicted Fishing. Today, we're out on the big river, vertical jigging for walleye. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about how to be more successful vertically jigging blade baits for walleye. As you can see, we've already caught one really nice fish, but it's a little windy out here, so we're gonna tuck inside the cove and uh, get out of the wind and show you guys how to do this. So if you wanna see how to vertical jig walleye, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. All right guys, so when talking about vertical jigging with blade baits for walleye, we're gonna start with the rod and the reel. So it's real important with the rod and the reel that you have a shorter rod. So this is an Okuma dead eye walleye rod and it's a seven foot six. You can use anywhere from six and a half to eight foot, but it's really important that it has a nice sensitive tip, but still has some backbone because as you're jigging this thing, you are gonna wanna make sure if it's a real limber rod, it's gonna tire you out real quick. So you want a sensitive tip, a sturdy backbone, and big enough rod that's gonna be able to handle some of these bigger fish we catch. The reel is just a 3,000 size reel. You could use a 2,500, you could use a 3,500, but this is a 3,000 Okuma Inspira. You can use any rod and reel you want. We wanna line that reel with some sort of braided line. I like a 20 to 30 pound braided line. You get too heavy a braided line, you get a lot of drag. So I try to stay in that 20 to 30, 30 pound line class. Um, and then we use a, just a little top shot here. So we have our top shot tied in here with just a blood knot on our, or ties our braid and our monofilament or fluorocarbon. And I just run about a five foot leader down to my blade bait. So a blade bait, is this little guy right here for those of you who don't know. It's basically just a piece of metal with a weighted head on it. They come in all different sizes, shapes, colors. This one is just a gold with the red eye. They're pretty cool though. They come in different sizes, you know, five eighths, half ounce, three quarters ounce. Um, and you wanna, you know, depending on where you're at, how much current there is, how much, you know, the depth, things like that is gonna change your, you know, what weight you're using. This is a five eighths. But I'm gonna show you some of the different color selections they have and different styles. So this is another style of the same same bait here. It's basically just a, um, the weighted head is not painted on this one. And then you have like this, where you have the same weighted head, but lots of different color and pattern on this as well. And there's three different settings you can run these on. I typically run them on the setting that the, the duo snap is on, but these will make, if you go on this back setting here, it's gonna make the blade hang more like this. So as it's coming up, it's gonna drop down faster. And then if you go on the front setting, then it's gonna make the blade come up and kind of fall slower. So you can play with those and use those for, you know, if they're not biting one, they may be biting the other. So don't be afraid to try any one of those three different options there. And then there's these types, which are 100% just painted blades. You know, they come in many different colors. This one's just a tiger pattern here. And I leave this, the hooks just the way they come. Most of these fish, the, the idea behind this is when you're ripping this bait up and down, it's creating vibration and this thing's just falling and pounding into the sand and creating a disturbance under the water. So we're gonna go out here and I'm gonna kind of walk you through the process of, of how we jig for these fish you know, how the, the proper jigging technique, the proper water, and then we're even gonna cover some of the electronic stuff, where to jig them and, and what locations to jig them in the river. All right, guys, so now let's talk about how to properly fish these baits. So there's a few different things that you really wanna pay attention to. Number one, this, this bait is meant to thump up and down on the bottom. So it's real similar to like jigging a bottom fish, but it's a little bit different motion. I'm gonna show you, so what you first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna set your bait up 
you're gonna drop straight down. Now boat control is really important when fishing these because, and that's where our Minn Kotas come in. So they're, they're, they're such a good thing for this style of fishery because they can kind of keep you moving with the current or fighting the wind or backing down with the wind and so on and so forth. It's real important that when you're doing this, that your line stays straight up and down as much as possible. You do not want your line veeing way back and having a sharp angle to your line. You want to be able to kind of jig and let that thing fall and really be able to see your line going straight up and down. When you start to get an angle on your line, you're not fishing. You're now fishing the bait this way instead of this way. So you want to make sure, number one, that you have your line straight up and down. And that's where the weight of the jig will also play a role is depending on your current, depending on the speed of the water, what weight jig you're, sometimes it's going to be either a slack, a lake or a, a river with very, very little current and you'll need a light jig, you know, uh, maybe less than a half ounce. But when you get into current and, and wind and things like that, you may need more, more like a three quarters ounce or a five eight. So just kind of use the weight of the of the blade bait um to to decipher you know what your conditions are for the day so if it's a windy day go heavier if it's a lot of current go heavier if there's no current go lighter next we're gonna just basically take this blade bait and we're gonna just drop it straight down to the bottom opening our bale and watching our line okay you'll know when you're you're if you could see right there my line stopped coming off of the reel basically it just the the reel stopped allowing line off because it's now on the bottom so i will reel my slack up and is what i'm going to do is you don't want to be doing big big jigs like this it's more of a short popping motion so i'm popping it up and feeling the bottom popping it up feeling the bottom and it's a real steep now you can always tell when you're jigging a blade bait right by feeling the vibration so these things make a very strong vibration as you jig up and then they fall freely strong vibration fall freely so it's what i'm feeling for and you can hear it as well when you're jigging this thing properly you're going to feel it in your reel and in your hand that's holding the rod and you're going to almost hear hear a vibration in the line and that's how you know you're you're jigging it with the right amount of force if i'm just really lightly jigging this thing it's not doing anything i'm barely getting any vibration out of it but when i really pump this rod with nice short steep jigs Basically, I'm feeling that vibration, I'm hearing it in the reel, and I know I'm properly fishing. So what I'm doing is I'm jigging up, and I'm feeling for it to touch bottom. If it doesn't touch bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and flip my bale and give it another six to eight inches or whatever it is. It's really important that you're maintaining contact with the bottom. You want that thing thumping the bottom every time. And there's what that's doing is those fish down there, they may not be active or, or even if they are active, it's just giving them something to zone in on and hear and feel and come to it. They come to the vibration and as you're jigging this, making sure you're getting that vibration in your hand and your reel. As a fish grabs onto it, it's usually as you're on your way up, you're gonna feel the fish and then set the hook into it and reel. So it's real important. Remember, listen for that, listen and feel for that jig. Now, as far as the jigging motion itself, I always, I, I do real short, steep jigs, just like so, instead of long, slow jigs. You know, and what that, I think that does is it just hops the bait and continues to pound the bottom and vibration, pound the bottom, vibration, pound the bottom. And it really gets their attention just like that. So next guys, the next portion of this is gonna be showing you the proper way to fish and the proper spots to fish. So come along and we'll show you that. All right guys, so now let's talk about where we're gonna target these fish and what we're looking for in our electronics. Because the electronics is a huge portion of what we do out here when we're walleye fishing. Walleye tend to be a fish that stays away from muddy bottom, kind of, they're looking for structure, like shale, broken rock, um, any type of big rock piles or rock, you know, where there's rock along the bank. Um, so I'm gonna kind of show you the difference between what it looks like where it's a muddy, bottom on our on our hummingbird here and then i'm going to kind of show you what we're looking for when we get into the area that looks proper where i would say okay it's time to start fishing and we'll even look for fish themselves at certain times when the tide's right we can actually look for these fish on the side imaging and find fish to target specifically off of our screen so let's take a look at the screen right now and basically this is going to show you what it looks like we're an area where i typically wouldn't try to focus i'm going to look at like a muddy bottom or um, where there's there's no structure no 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 rock piles so let's take a look at the screen here so basically this is what it's going to look like 
when we have a real muddy bottom. And this is just, there's no structure here. And I'm gonna show you the difference between what the screen's gonna look like when there is structure and when there isn't structure. So this is what I would say is not your typical walleye water or walleye bottom. And I'm gonna show you on the hummingbird here in just a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up onto the area where I typically will fish and target these fish and show you what the difference looks like. Now another little tip when you're when you're running your side imaging on your hummingbird or whatever electronics, a lot of times the way these things are mounted, your motor will get in the way of the actual side imaging. And so it's real important to trim your motor up and sometimes it's gonna give you a little bit clearer image. Um, so as you can see here, we're starting to come into a little bit of rock on the bottom of the hummingbird here. So we can kinda, I'm gonna get down here and show you. So as you can see here, this is more the type of structure we're looking for. And this is not, this is not super good structure, but it's starting, as you can see, to get into the rock formation. You're starting to see some broken rock and chunk rock over here. And I'll show you where we're gonna start. So what I like to do is I like to just kind of idle around and find a starting point for myself that looks good, the bottom structure looks good, and where potentially I'll be marking some fish as well. And, and if you've ever used side imaging before, you're kind of looking for shadows. You'll look for a, a little white, line or uh, sometimes it'll be very defined like with a bigger fish like sturgeon but with a smaller fish like walleye it's going to be a little less defined it'll look like kind of like a grain of rice with a shadow underneath the bit and if i can see some on here i will show you but let's get up to the area we're going to fish and, and i'll show you what it looks like on the hummingbird here all right guys so this is kind of what i'm looking for this is going to be a great starting point for me you can see there's a big rock structure right here. Um, it, you kind of have a big line of rock that runs down here with some softer ground around it. That's gonna be a great ambush point for these walleye and it's a great starting point. So is what I would do is I would start on there. I would drop my vertical jigs down, my, my blade baits. I would make sure that I'm fishing them properly like we went over and hopefully it'll bring you more success. All right, addicts, thanks for tuning in, and hopefully this helps you guys be more successful when you're blade bait fishing. Don't forget, share this video out to your friends and family. Give us a big thumbs up. Go down here and tap that subscribe button. And stay tuned, guys. We'll see you on the water.